people who take part in the rising, who fight in the rising, are all known to the authorities. They're not secret members of a secret army, they're not wearing balaclavas. Uh, they've been parading up and down openly for two years. So the British knew a great deal in advance about the plans for the rebellion, but what they didn't have was, if you like, joined up thinking, especially in Dublin, as to what was likely to happen. What's amazing about the Rising from a British point of view is first of all, it doesn't really create a crisis for the British. Irish soldiers at the front don't mutiny. Irish sailors in the, in the Navy continue to fight. Uh, nowhere are Britain's strategic interests harmed by the Rising. And this is amazing when you consider that the rebellion is taking place within the United Kingdom. It's not so amazing when you realise that Britain had been threatened with rebellion since 1913 over Ulster. And it was Ulster whom they feared would actually take to arms, not, not Irish separatists. The Rising is taken as the defining moment uh, for the birth of, of independent Ireland. Some people would say it should be January 1919 when the first Doyle Aaron, of which my great-grandfather was a member, actually met in Dublin because it, after all, had strong electoral legitimacy, which was something that the, the rebels in 1916 certainly didn't. Uh, they had never put their propositions to the Irish people. They had never shown documents like the 1916 proclamation to anyone. The 1916 proclamation itself is an extremely interesting document. We have to read it very carefully. It is not a draft constitution for the Irish people. It is a speech written very largely by a man who was brilliant at writing and delivering speeches, Patrick Pearce. It has many internal contradictions. It is not, a, if you like, a fully democratic uh, piece of work, and it wasn't intended to be. It was intended to be, as, as Pierce would have delivered it, a powerful piece of rhetoric. It is not a, a map uh, or a design for, for an independent democratic republic or anything of the kind. It has elements we would applaud nowadays, such as uh, implying equal rights, political rights for women as well as for men. It has other aspects, for example, the attachment to gallant allies in Germany, uh, which, ironically, uh, the most Republican people on this island would now shy away from.